Well, well, what did the cat drag in today? It's a tutorial on making a pachinko game. So what is the goal for this tutorial sequence? Well, like the last one, the goal here is to create a small, fully functional game to slowly expand your knowledge of Unity and Bolt. As I said in the Meteors tutorial sequence, there are Unity tutorials out there that at the end, you'll have a much more feature-rich game if you can finish the tutorial. The focus here is to make something small that can be completed within a day. Give me three, four hours of your time tops and you'll have this game done. Now, what do I expect from you in terms of knowledge coming into this tutorial? Well, I expect that you know how to use the Unity interface, that you're comfortable navigating through the windows, you can install packages, that you have basic level manipulation of things in the hierarchy, you can create objects, move them around, change the scale and the transform, uh, the rotation uh, properties and the transform, you can create basic parent-child relationships in the hierarchy, and that's about it in terms of Unity uh, skills. For Bolt, I expect that you have the ability to, well, obviously install Bolt, and that you can add a flow chart onto an object, or flow graph onto an object, and drag in blocks, link those blocks up, and get a basic Bolt flow graph running. In terms of external assets, there is one external asset that you will require, and that is an image for the backdrop. Because one of the goals in this tutorial sequence is to take a look at creating custom materials. So as you can see here, I have this nice little star background. Now permit me a brief soapbox moment. If you are going to use an image, and you are going to publicly display this project, make sure you have permission to use that image. Now, this is a project that's never going to see the light of day. Now, you might only show it privately to a few friends or family. You know, fine, go nuts, use whatever image you darn well please. But if this is something that you're going to display publicly, even if you are just going to toss it up onto an itch.io page and forget about it, make sure you have permission to use it. Just because you find an image on the internet does not mean you have permission to use that image. Uh, besides just being simple common courtesy and not using things that don't belong to you, uh, there are legal issues involved with using images that you did not create. And no, simply because you are not charging money for it really has nothing to do with it whatsoever at all. Make sure you understand the permissions of the image you are using. That is why I am pulling my image from NASA because it's a government agency, any resources that they post on the web is automatically public domain because of that. And so I just did a search for NASA space images, found myself a cool little background, and there we go. I got a perfectly acceptable public domain image that I can use. Just take a moment and make sure that the image that you are going to use, you have the permission to use it, if you are going to show it publicly. Again, if no one but you is going to see this, who's going to know, right? So, there's my soapbox for using stuff off the internet. I shall get off that now. So, what is this project going to look like when it's completed? Like I said, it's a pachinko game. Think uh, Price is Right. And that game where they would drop the disc uh, at the top of a box and it would bounce its way down through a series of little pegs and land in a slot. Now here we're going to be using a ball instead of a, a disc. But the idea is the same. I've got a ball. I'll release it. It's going to bounce off of the pegs in a variety of ways. Now notice it's going to release differently every time. So that time it went into that compartment. It looks like it's going to go in there again, but 
via a slightly different path. All right, there we go. Now, went into that one there. Nope, oh, went into that one there. And I'm not moving the ball. That's going to be an important feature of the game because if the ball dropped perfectly straight every time, that would be far, far less interesting. And once you have completed everything, because, of course, you're going to bounce that way. Uh, once you have completed everything and the ball stops being a jerk about things, there we go. You get this glorious U windscreen and the ball disappears and no longer comes back up to the top when it hits the goals down here. That's what we're going to be creating. Let's do a quick overview of what our graphs are going to look like once we're done so you can see where we're headed with this. I'm going to switch to full screen here for the ball graph to see things a bit better. Now, some of these are going to look like a lot of blocks, but if you take it one logical step at a time, nothing here is all that hard. So we're going to have a movement unit, which is going to look very familiar to what we did in the Meteors project. Only this time we're just manipulating horizontal. We don't have any vertical movement. And we do have a super unit inside of a super unit to control our X, min, and max values. Again, might look like there's a lot of wires here, but it really is simple once you take it one step at a time. Coming back up here, once we finish with our movement, we're going to be looking for the fire one button, which by default is the left mouse button. And if we detect that, then we will release it. And here's where we handle adding in our random force and our random torque to make it a little bit different every time we release. We have a trigger. One of the things we're going to be looking at in this video sequence is using tags. We've got two different types of triggers. How do I know which trigger I'm hitting? Well, I'm looking for a specific tag. So if the trigger that I entered has the reset tag, well, I reset the ball. And if it doesn't, well, I don't do anything. We're also going to be monitoring the game state this time, putting a little bit of state management. Although, to be clear, we are not using Bolt's state machines for this. I'm still using flow graphs. But inside this update loop here, I'm just checking to see uh, what is our hit count. And once hit count reaches five, then I win. And I turn on and off objects as necessary. And the other new thing that we will be dealing with are macros, because I've got five different goals here. And rather than having this flow graph embedded five different times, I have a macro that defines it once that I then apply five times. So that way, if there is a change that I need to make to this, I have one spot that I have to go to to make that change instead of five. We're also going to do a little bit of canvas work. which is where we have our U-Win display. And that is the quick high-level overview of what we will be doing in this tutorial sequence. So in the next video, we are going to construct the scene in its entirety. We'll get this backdrop, the walls, the, the goals set up, that little reset area down there, the pegs so on and so forth. We'll get that all nice set up and ready to go. So make sure you've got a new project set up, you've got Bolt installed, and we will get moving on this. And as usual, to a PC Almighty algorithm, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't find it particularly useful, the thumbs down button is right next to it. See you in the next video.